Greetings, this is Fallon Hunt. So, uh, I have been thinking yet again about the Myers-Briggs stuff. And in thinking about the Myers-Briggs stuff, I'm like, am I really an INFJ? Because I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure. So I started watch listening to the Person ha Personality Hacker podcast, going through um, the various types, like introverted, extroverted, perceiving, judging, this kind of thing. And every single one of them, I'm listening and making notes, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's me. That is me. So uh, at first, I was questioning whether or not I was INFJ again, and then I looked into this, and I'm, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is on my head again. So I'm listening to a bunch of their things, a bunch of different personality type stuff. Um, I'm listening to one really interesting uh, discussion with this INFJ that comes across as extremely extroverted. And it's because he's kind of had to learn how to do it. Really interesting. It's kind of like he's convinced himself that he can help mo more people by being more approachable. And being more approachable be be me means acting extroverted. And he goes on about how fucking much this drains him and how he's had to learn how to balance it. Really interesting, really interesting. But, um, because I've met and spoken with extroverted seeming introverts before and they've, they've got a very similar take on it where it's like they almost have a duty to kind of, they feel this duty to communicate with and talk to as many people as possible because they think it's rude if they don't do it. So this kind of pushes this thing. But if you actually talk to them, Oh, they're, int they're, they're introverted. They're very introverted. They've just convinced themselves that they need to do this. And to be honest, it makes people like people more when they're more extroverted. Um, unless they're introverted. At which point they, be they can become very annoying. But anyway. Anyway. Um, so I get into obsessions with, with topics. Um, I will often jump from one obsession to another. And whilst I'm in that set obsession, I will absorb as much information as possible. My world will become absorbing as much information as possible. Uh, for example, when I got into gardening, whilst I was in grief, essentially, I was absorbing as much information as fucking possible about this. To the point where a guy I know in my family who has been gardening all his life started asking me for um for information and help because he i'm in an obsession i'm talking about it with people as well and i got to the point where i knew more about him now admittedly he's also taught me a lot but yeah um so it is it is it is that kind of thing it's really it's you know it's it's fun you gain skills if you get into specific obsessions or you just waste time it depends on perspective <laughs> But my current, so, but I, I'm jumping back into the Myers-Briggs stuff because I find it really interesting. Typical INFJ. The funny thing about INFJs is, is I don't really, I'm not entirely comfortable with being an INFJ because it's the whole, oh, look how rare they are. If you look at any video by INFJ or read any article, one of the first things they always mention is look how rare and special they are. And of course, in this day and age where everyone wants to be a special snowflake, people are going to jump on that if they want to be different. And I'm different enough. And it sucks. I feel like a fucking alien. It's not fun. People want to be different until they live the life in which they actually are. Then you realize how fucking alienating it is. It's not fun, right? But I hate that idea that people think, oh, he's just trying to be a special snowflake. Like, no, this, like, you know. So I was questioning it again, and I looked into everything. It led me towards INFJ. The funny thing is, I did actually do a test on the person ha personality hacker website, and it, thinking it was a different thing, and it gave me INFJ. And that write-up, I'll link it down below, that write-up is the first INFJ write-up that felt like it was written by someone who was an actual INFJ. Yo, it's taking me. You're an INFJ. <laughs> Wait. No, that's legitimately what it's just landed on. There we go. That's not the anagram test, apparently. But, um, okay. Yeah, I'm an INFJ. Dude. Oh, dude. This is so fucking true. This is so fucking true. It's kind of annoying. Because a lot of the experience of INFJ is in here. It's in a little mental little bubble. 
Um, and you can only write so much about an INFJ for only experiencing it on the outside. Because so much of it is inner, internal, that when people write about it, they kind of miss a lot of that. But this write-up on the Personality Hacker website is so fucking legit, it felt like it was written for me. And that validation, that, oh my god, people actually understand me. There, Not only that, but there are people like there out that, like me, is such a heartwarming, like, just... It, it, if you've spent so much of your life feeling alone... Even when you're surrounded people, like nobody is, I don't want to say on your level because that sounds hoity, but no one thinks or communicates the same way you do. It's really alienating. You start to feel like there's something wrong with you. Um, so when you read this kind of thing, like, okay, I'm not on my own. And there's actually a way of being this way and being stable. That is such a relief, which is why despite being the rarest type, you will find INFJs fucking everywhere in the community that's formed around this. Um, because they're the kind, they're the type, one of the types to get fucking obsessive about this kind of thing. So, um, through the Personality Hacker podcast, I heard about a new thing. A Enagrams, Enagrams, whatever the fuck they're called. It's a similar metric, but this one seems to be focusing more on shadow work. It's less about, it's more about the internal, like, what contributes to what, right? So, it's essentially, here is your dark side. Here's the dark side, here's the problems you have, and here's the kind of things you need. Um, more so than the Myers-Briggs stuff. It's more shadow work, it's a bit more personal, and it can be difficult to read, because when you get your result, and you read it, and it's really accurate... It's like seeing a psychic as a non-believer and having that psychic be completely 110% accurate. That's scary, right? Especially for someone who... I like to think I'm open, but if I'm completely honest, there's a lot about me that I keep hidden, especially when it comes to family. Part of it is because I know they care and I don't want to worry them, I don't want to burden them, and I don't want them to obsess over certain things because they might interpret it in a different way than I do. Things like that. But I am less open with family than I am with like friends or other people. But there is a lot that goes in on here that I'm not really that open about. So I feel like an open book. But if I really think about myself, I'm not. Which I think is another kind of Ina J thing. However, the Enneagram thing is interesting. And so I did multiple of the tests. I actually recorded myself doing them. But I didn't end up uploading it because it's too personal. It is too personal. And it reveals aspects of myself that I'm not entirely comfortable with sharing. So I, I didn't upload it. Um, but I'll tell you the, the results that I got. I did about six of the tests that I could find. Five or six. Every single one of them gave me number five, type five, as my type. Every one of them. If there were multiple results, type five was number one in like the 90s, near 100. Followed by type four, and then followed around the high 80s by type nine. The strongest is number five with a 98. Uh, followed by number four with a 95. And then we'll do the one underneath that, which is nine with an 89. Right. Now this one just gives me one, which is number five, the thinker. All right, what are my results? Type four, 8.4. Type 5 again. So we've got a plus 2 for type 5. And we've got a plus 1 for type 4. The artist and the thinker. We've got type 9. 7.1. So I start reading into them. Type 4. Very little. Like there's aspects of it that I connect with. But 
Not real. So I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos on each of the types by far. I've listened to multiple podcasts on the types by far. And I've read multiple entries and articles and things like that on the type so far. There's elements of four that rings true. But the majority of it, not so much. Such as the desire to be different. No. I am. Or at least I feel different. And it's not fun. Um, the arrogance, which is also connected to the five, yes, but in my teens. I've not been like that for many years, but in my teens, definitely. I was an arrogant prick. Um, I think, I like things like that. Um, the fives, fives feel spot on for the most part. Five feels spot on, and what doesn't apply to me now definitely applied to me in my teens. But nines are really often mistyped as fives. It happens all the time, apparently. And I've li I've read I've, I've, the the type nine thing is really weird because some of them, the uh, some of the some of the ones I've. Um, I've, 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 I've like podcasts and whatnot I've, I've listened to like there was one by the um, wait a minute what was it called spot there was one of them by one of the podcasts I think I've mentioned um, that was the Enneagram typecast they did one on type 9 that was 110% that was me completely I've also listened to the Type 5, uh, five one. So much of that is me. So much of that is me. Like, bang on the money. Four parts, but not all. So I don't think I'm a four. I think I'm either a nine or a five with a wing in four. Um, but I've, like, almost everything I've read and, and watched and listened to on the five is bang on the money. Half of what I've watched, listened to, and read about is is right for Dyke Nine, but the other half is re like I can't relate to it whatsoever. So it's really difficult. But much like with the INFJ, where I find myself questioning it every every so often because, you know, I feel as if is this a special snowflake thing, um, type, but I get like I get INFJ like every time. The Enneagram stuff, I'm really new to it, so I'm learning I'm learning about it. I'm learning a lot about it. The Enneagram stuff is I really don't know. And nines that's common for nines. Because nines share a lot of similarities with type with INFJs, their ability to social chameleon, the like describe who you are as a person. I can't do that. Like, uh, the um, Enneagram typecast actually went into that scenario. And the kind of response they mocked is exactly the kind of response I would give. So I do think that I'm a 9. But I also relate so strongly to 5. It's really hard. It's really hard. And 5 more consistently as well. So, all that said, I've got a video in front of me. And we're going to do it. This video is by High Five Friend. Nine versus five. How to know which each Enneagram you are. Nine to five to nine. And I thought I'd do this. Incidentally, I'm going to leave links to the podcasts that I've listened to as well as the best um, the best Enneagram tests that I've done. So, it's what we're going to do. I've got my notepad in front of me. And I'm going to split it off in four sections. So section one will be type... Actually, which direction are they doing in? Because otherwise I will get confused. Right, nine is the peacemaker. And then we've got five. And then I'm going to have a category for both. And I'm going to have a category for unsure. Right, let's go. Hopefully the, the audio is okay on this. Uh, let's have a look at OBS. Where is OBS? Cool. All right. 
Let's go. This video, I'm going to ask you 43 rapid fire questions. It Ooh, wait a minute. Where's my house? There's my house. All right. Under five minutes to help you determine if you are an Enneagram 5 or an Enneagram 9. I will be pausing this. It's 100% guaranteed or your money back. If you are new to the Enneagram, consider after this video clicking the video above my head or the link in the description below, which talks more about the Enneagram 101. The primary source for this video was taken from the website Enneagram Institute from an article entitled Misidentified. I've also read this article as well. I will have my Enneagram 9s, the peacemakers, over here, and I will have my Enneagram 5 investigators over All here. All right then. Quick, grab a paper and a pencil. You don't I've have got a any pen. digits. That's Ready? Fine. Set. Here we go. Okay. When in thought are you? Impressionistic or highly focused? I did this before, uh, and that one is both. I can't decide on that one. It's both. It depends on what I'm thinking about. Involved with generalities are penetrating and can be microscopic. Both. Do you have very imaginative ruminations and thoughts? Or can you be imaginative, but more concrete? I'm more do imaginative. Do you lose interest quickly? Or do you find the rabbit hole and go in farther? Are the you rabbit not hole? concerned with details? Or do you love details? Ah, uh, details. Can you drift off when bored and lack follow through? Or are you typically highly focused and sometimes- I drift off when I'm bored. Much? Would your friends describe you more as gentle or intense? Easy going. Gentle or intense? I think gentle. Yeah, gentle. Easy going or strong minded? Honestly, both. Um, I am very much both. And they've seen both. Or strong minded. Patient or argumentative? Argumentative. Receptive or contentious? Accommodating? I want to say receptive. Accommodating or resists influence of other? I'm both, depending on the situation. I think I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give that to nine. I'm generally more accommodating. Like I, it's it's the kind of thing. Well, I'll have my opinion. I will have my opinion, and usually I won't shy away from giving it. However, um, generally speaking, unless it's something really important, I'll 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 accommodate. Yeah, like yeah, I'm I'd, I'd say I'm accommodating. Right, we're gonna put a five through that then. Or highly resistant to the influence of others. Are you disengaged or detached? I honestly don't know. I had to look up the difference between these two. And essentially it's down to attitude. Um, And I've seen myself be both. And I don't pay enough attention to really know. So I'm going to put unsure for this one. Open or resistant? Both. I'm, I'm honestly both. Um... I tend to be more resistant with family, but I'm, I'm an open book for the most part. But And if people can beat me on that level, you can read every single page. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am both. I am both. I'm putting both. It really depends. A dreamer or a theorist? I'm a dreamer. Don't like admitting it. I'd rather be a theorist, but now I'm a dreamer. Non-threatening and non-judgmental, or defensive and contentious. Again, both. It depends. It depends on the topic. That's a five for both. At peace or in tension. Tension. I look more calm on the surface than I am in the background. Utopian. Or nihilistic? Nihilistic. My worldview is um, absurdism, which is the positive cousin of um, nihilism. Feel more at ease with the world? Or are you afraid of... Overwhelmed, without question. Being overwhelmed with the world. 
Complacent or cynical and resistant? Very cynical. Brilliant at work, unfocused and inattentive elsewhere, or focused and attentive everywhere all the time? I'm more the other one. If, if, there's, if there's a responsibility on me, I am going to do it to the best of my ability. If I don't have responsibility, I can be flighty. If I make a promise, I'm keeping it. Put it that way. Not concerned with the consequences of your actions? Or very concerned with the consequences of acting one way rather than another? Yeah, I, you... I care. I care what I'm going to like. like. I consider shit. There's a reason why, like, I'm always the same person. Like, I'm always me. But people don't in always see the entirety of me, depending on what is uh, appropriate for the situation, which I think most people are like, but I think maybe I'm a little bit more aware of it. I don't know. Idealize the world and believe good triumphs over evil? No. Or analyze the real world and create scenarios where evil triumphs over good? Analyze. In tension with it. Do you care about what people think about you? Or not really care? I care what people think about me, but that does not mean that it's going to um, affect my actions. So that I do care, but it's like I'd rather you like me than not like me. But if you have an opinion that I think is disgusting, I'm not going to shy away from telling you. If I ha you have an opinion that I disagree with and it's not a big deal, then whatever. But it's like... If I think this opinion of yours is disgusting, I don't care if your opinion of me, like, really lowers because we have a disagreement on that. Because I think it's disgusting. But I do care what people think. It does suck when somebody doesn't like you or people get the wrong idea of you. This kind of thing. Um, if I didn't care what people think, then being an alien and feeling like an alien wouldn't be such a big deal. So that's, that's a definite nine. I do care, but I don't think it's as big as it is with some other people. I'd, I'd be insane right now if that was the case because I don't think... I think people get the wrong idea of me on a regular basis. Part of it might be my own communication. And the next one I'm suspicious and not trusting. It does not mean I'm not friendly. I am friendly. But I'm generally speaking not trusting. Or what people think about you. Do you like people? Sometimes even too trusting? Or are you suspicious in anything but trusting? Do you simplify reality or complexify reality? I both. <laughs> I, I can simplify some things, but if I if I look into it in depth, it becomes it becomes too fucking complicated. I complicate it to the point where I, I get myself into the into a fucking corner and I can't get out because there's no right answer. Um so yeah, I, I both. That's very much a case of both. Do you look to the past or look to the future? Um, this year. Do you have and deep I, oh, I clicked on a different video there. Do I look to the past or do I look to the future? I neither. I mean, I do. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to put that one as a both one. I don't think there's one I particularly do more so than the other. But general thoughts or deep and very specific thoughts. I don't know. I'm going to say specific because I... T you know what? I'm going to put... I'm going to put unsure for that one because it depends on what they mean by specific or general. Like, are my thoughts deep in general? Or do I go deep about specific things? I think I go deep about... No, I don't know. I'm going to go and show. Do you turn a blind eye to disruptions or ignore it? Or examine disruptions? I examine them. And dig deeper. If we can figure out what went wrong, then we can try and avoid it in the future. You know? So, yeah, like, if you ignore this shit, then it happens again and again and again and again and again. Eventually blows in your face. You need to examine it, figure out what the fuck went wrong, and try and avoid it in future. Generally think that things will work out. Or think of reasons they won't. They won't. <laughs> I am a negative person. No. It's more useful to think to think that things might go wrong so you can f f think of contingencies away with it than to think things will work out all the time. 
Do you see things the way you want them to be? Or see things as they really are? Based I imagine things how I want them to be. But I believe how I see things as they really are. I could be wrong, but I do believe that I see things as they really are. Because, um, and which actually goes, it comes down to why I'm so fucking negative. Because the world sucks, man. It is a chaotic mess where the powerful dominate over the, the rest of the world on a regular basis. Um, so, yeah, as they really are. As far as my... I'm aware, because again, I could be wrong. I'm not fucking omniscient. On facts. Do you reinterpret reality to make it more comforting and simple? Or do you really dig, 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 diggy, diggy. When under stress, do you disassociate or become paranoid? I disassociate. Are you a gifted storyteller that communicate effectively, even with children? Or do you share your ideas with just a few people or even no one at all? Do you desire... I'm unsure about that one, because I don't think I'm a, I'm a, I don't think I'm an amazing communicator. I'm an amazing listener, and as I'm listening, I can get the information, reinterpret it, and like give you my interpretations back, or like connect this to this to this to this to this to this. You know, I've been complimented on this on many occasion, um, but I'm terrible with children, so I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, lim and. You know what? I'm going to give it to limited sharing because I said before that there's a lot that goes on here, but that I don't share all of it. So, yeah, you're right. No, limited sharing. Definitely. I'm glad that I thought that one through. Desire to keep the peace and avoid conflict? Or do you not really mind conflict? Both. I can actually enjoy conflict at times, uh, especially if it's with people who with whom I have no respect. If I don't have respect for anyone, then I don't give a flying fuck what they think. And watching them lose their fucking mind makes me feel good about myself if I'm keeping calm. It's fun. That being said, generally speaking, I, I, I'd I rather keep the peace. In fact, it's something I can be quite good at, getting people to learn or understand each other's perspective. Um, so I'm going to give that to nine. Do you have a desire to master the world? Or do you have a desire to conquer the world? Through I'm unsure life? about that one. If something disrupts your peace, a bit too do grandiose. you turn a blind eye to it? Or do you, oh shit, do, do I've just muted it. it? <laughs> I leaned on this. Wait a minute. Alright. If something disrupts your peace, do you turn a blind eye to it? Or do you, do, do you examine it and dissect it? I examine it. Same answer as before. Yeah, if it again, if something annoys the crap out of me, I obsess over it and figure out a way around it. When you're asked to be introspective, do you kind of avoid it and does it? I fucking love it. I do it as a fucking um. I do it as a hobby. I'm doing it right now. That's what all this kind of personality psychology is all about. It's analyzing yourself and like being introspective and trying to get to the bottom of it. I do it all the fucking time. Yeah, it's it's fun. That stress you out, or do you actually kind of enjoy it? When asked to problem solve, do you give grand sweeping ideas on how to solve the problem? Problems, problems, or do you problems. You speculate on the problem, and then the problem with the problem, yeah. and then the problems with the problem, yeah. with the problems. With yeah. The... When you think of an idea, do you ruminate on your fantasies, or do you help put it into action and see? I ruminate more than I when do in asks action. You, how can we have world peace? Do you say? Everyone should love one. That's another. never going to happen. Do you do extensive historical research, develop a theory, and then write a treatise? My answer is, it's never going to happen. Well, it doesn't matter how many theories, how much research you actually do, we're never going to have world peace. And the idea that everyone should love one another, it's never going to fucking happen. Never going to happen. Uh, not, neither. I'm not even putting that in unsure. That one does not count. If you're wondering what it's like to fly, do you make a story about it? Or do you invent an airplane, do research on birds? Oh, I write a story. Birds? I think about it in my imagination. Jim Henson and Walt Disney, or Albert Einstein and Charles Darwin, or design a rocket. Do you relate more to Jim Henson and Walt Disney, mm -hmm. or Albert Einstein and Charles Darwin? 
Well, I don't know about relate more to, but Walt Disney and Jim Henson are both fucking awesome. And whilst I admire Darwin's research, not necessarily himself, um, and um, Einstein, I'm, I'm not going to answer this one because I don't see myself, I don't really relate to these people. I just kind of admire them. Uh, Jim Henson, especially. Um, but, yeah. How did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Send me a little bit of love by pressing that. Well, the end results are... There we go. There are the results. In 9, we have uh, 10, 12. We have 12. In 5, we have 18. In both, we have 7. And I am unsure about 3 of them. I believe one or two of them I just completely discounted anyway. So this would point towards five being the correct type. But 12 and 18 is pretty close. So I'm not satisfied. <laughs> 12 and 18 is pretty close. And I am not satisfied. But the thing that puts me off being five is that because I've read how often type 9s mistype as type 5s. That's what puts me off. Because being an INFJ, I already have that, oh, he just wants to be special thing. And I feel as if this is more of that. Can you, t like, I'm definitely not a type five, a, a type, a type 4. I'm definitely not a type 4 because type 4 is long to be special. Uh, mm, um... So it's like it's 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 five with maybe a wing in four. Sorry, yeah, five with a wing in four, or it's it's nine, and it's really fucking difficult. And I have done her other one actually, where she goes into uh, five with a four wing and four with a five wing, and I got like two, five with a um, uh, four a four with a five wings. And then I realized bookmarks count, at which point, like, one of them is tabs. So the kind of people to have a shit ton of tabs are more likely to be the five with a four wing. But then I realized she counted bookmarks as well. And I have way too many of those. Uh, way too many of those. And the other one was INFJs are more common with the other one. So there, I got two of the other answer. And one of them is kind of inconsequential. And the other one I got wrong anyway, so... If I am a five, I'm a five. I'm a five of a four wing, and I'm not the other way around. But um, I I'm, I'm not I'm not really satisfied with that. I need more. I need more evidence. I think the only way to kind of satisfy me with this is to like hire an actual fucking person to do this, which I'm probably not gonna do to get to the bottom of it. Um, because then, you know, yeah, man, it's uh. It's annoying. The only thing that I can do is like I've, I've I've got to the point like I'm not for that one. I'm dismissing. I'm not for. So what I am going to do, I think next is I'm going to look into the wings of nine to see which one of these I connect with more. And then I'm going to look into the wings of four. One of them, I sorry, the wings of five. One of them I know is four. So I've already looked into four. And there's some of it, but not all of it. So I need to look into the other wing, which I think is six for five. Yeah, five and four. So I need to look into the, the, the I need to look into both wings of fives and nines, because then this attaches to the person. So and the all again, the confusing thing about nines is they're often so confused as to what they actually are, and they chameleon so well that it it uh, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah, I could. I, there's so much that I could be wrong about with this that I don't want to say yay or nay with these things. I wanna, I want hardline proof, which I think is more of a five thing in general. But I want 
hard line this is me the kind of the kind of reassuring i need on a regular basis with the infj thing i need it with this i need like a hard line you are this but uh i'll leave the links down below to the video i've just responded to or reacted to or done the thing thing uh the enneagram tests the um myers briggs test and the podcasts that I've been listening to. So, have at it. This is fun. I really enjoy this shit. I might, I'm might. i not going to have enough time tonight to edit this. But, yeah, this is the kind of shit that I really enjoy. Uh, and I get really obsessive over it. I'm back into it. So, I'm trying to absorb as much information as possible. I must know. I must know. And, of course, I really want all my friends and family to do these both the Myers-Briggs and the Enneagram stuff, I really want them to do it because I feel as if, if I understand where people fall into this, I get I have, have a better understand of what's going on in here, even if it isn't coming out the mouth, like what's going on in here, what's motivate them. And the more I know about people and how they operate, the better I can kind of um, tackle things. And maybe it may even lower my anxiety because... I know, I get an idea of how people op operate. And if I have an idea of how people operate, I can communicate with them on a level where I have a bit more, I'm going to say it, where I have a bit more control. So not controlling them, but controlling the situation. Um, so less bullshit happens. And I think the whole, the whole kind of, the thing of tackling this with as much information as possible is very five. So, I'm jumping up and down. I feel really strongly with both 5 and 9, and I really don't know. Um, I definitely lean more towards feeling like a 5 than 9, but I also think that I'm wrong, and I think 9 is probably what I actually am. So...